Welcome to the Crossing Church Weekly Sermon Podcast. For more information about this podcast and other resources, visit our website at thecrossing.cc. Good morning, everybody. It's great to be in the house of the Lord today, and this is our home church. Whenever we're not on the road ministering somewhere, this is where we'll be. This is where we are always, and so... Such a joy. We want to thank your pastor, Pastor Randy and Pastor Stacy, for allowing us to minister today. And uh, those that are watching online, welcome you into the service as well this morning. And uh, if you don't mind, is it okay if I sing a song? Because uh, that way, if I sing, that means I have less time to preach. And I'm sure you would, uh, I'm going to move this here. Y'all probably don't like that. But this morning, I nearly, uh, uh, that little carpet there, uh, try to hurt me so anyway but it's such a joy to be in the house of the Lord today and I love this time of year and the title of my message this morning is uh, it's all about the presence and not what's under your tree but it's all about the presence of the Lord amen and that's the reason that we uh, celebrate is uh, God came to earth be our Redeemer, our Savior, our King. God came to earth in the form of man. He was God, but He was man. And uh, we're going to talk about that today. But uh, there's a song that my wife and I, uh, we wrote many years ago. And there's a place that we can live. Uh, we're going to talk about some things this morning, but uh, there's a place called a secret place that you can abide, that you can live. And the enemy cannot find you in that place. You're hid under the shelter of the Almighty. So I want to bless you with it today. There's a place that I found that is holy and I
very much again such a joy to be here and uh, this morning uh, I want to talk about one of my favorite times of the year uh, one of the reasons is because uh, my wife and I we got married in December and uh, if you can get married any other time of the year it's probably a good thing but as a minister uh, Christmas is a tough time we got married on the 18th of December and uh, most of the time because being in ministry, we don't get to celebrate our anniversary till after, you know, after the first of the year because of everything that's going on. Christmas programs and all of those wonderful things that are taking place and happening. But uh, uh, as the older we get, you know, there are a lot of things that we appreciate about Christmas. And, and now that I have grandchildren, you know, that, uh, that changes everything. Yeah. It makes you a kid again. And uh, thank the Lord for Allie and Austin. And, and uh, one of the reasons we moved here to Houston is to be close to our kids. And uh, we have two other children, uh, one in Dallas and one in uh, Oklahoma. And all of, the, of our children are in ministry. So uh, Christmas, you don't get to see your kids as much as many people do. So we have to pick other times to, to celebrate life together uh, because we're, we're sharing the gospel with others during Christmas. But... Uh, uh, my grandchildren, uh, our, our oldest that, that's here in Houston, uh, Judah, he came in the house and he looked, and uh, I think it was Zion was the one who said, Papa, you have no, no presents under your tree. And I said, yes, because uh, I said, Santa Claus hasn't come to my house yet. But he's coming, I promise, he's coming. And then Judah, the older one, said, Papi, uh, uh, the elf is not in the tree. Because we have, uh, my wife found this elf, the bottom half has a stick in it, and the top half is the big hat. So our tree in our living room is a tree that uh, really, it's all of the kids' uh, ornaments when they made growing up in church and in school, and uh, now the grandbabies and all of that. So the elf gets stuck in the tree. So the bottom half is stuck in one half of the tree, and, 
and the cone of the hats in the other half of the tree. So now my grandkids are happy because the elf is stuck in the tree. So anyway, you see Christmas a whole different way. But I wanted to give you a couple of, uh, of examples for, for my wife and I and some things that, that I remember growing up. Now, I, I have five siblings, or four siblings and then myself, so there's five of us together. Two boys and three girls. And so whenever I was growing up, my, my brother's five years younger than I am. I'm the oldest of the five. So I don't know what you got for Christmas or how your Christmas happened, but when there were multiple children in the household, everyone had to open their presents at the same time because we were going to get the same thing. It may be a different color, but it was going to be the same thing. Now, here's the problem. I'm five years older than my brother. So, so at age 10, John is five. And I'll never forget, Odessa, Texas, I received for Christmas a bow and arrow set, a fiberglass bow with three arrows with steel tips. I'm 10. My brother is five. So you can just tell right away this is not going to end well. And sure enough, before the end of Christmas Day, my brother had shot me in the foot with one of those arrows. He had to put his foot down so he could hold the bow with one foot and then lean down so that he could pull the string on the bow. And yes, I was pulling my arrows out of the box, and my brother shot me in the foot with his arrows. So anyway, and my sisters, they... Two of them are blondes. The other is uh, dark-headed like I used to be. And so two of them got blonde-headed Barbies. The other one got a dark-headed Barbie, and they all had different kinds of clothes and all of that. But our presents were basically the same. I have to tell you, because when we got married, our very first Christmas, we went away to uh, Red River, New Mexico for our honeymoon for like four days because that's all we had. When our family traveled and we ministered together, uh, the Cruz family, we had two uh, weeks a year off. And one was in June and one was in December. And the other 50 weeks we were ministering in Baptist churches. So uh, we got December. That was the one. So that's when we got married in December. And we drove all the way back from Red River to have our own Christmas, our first Christmas in our house. We had our tree set up, a real tree with the, the C7, you know, the real lights that will really burn you and all that wonderful thing in our little one-bedroom apartment. And I'll never forget waking up on Christmas morning. There were two presents under the tree. We, we, we made $50 each a week. $100 a week is what we made. And we're in full-time ministry back then, see. So, so I, my box is long, and it's, a, you know, and my box is about this big that I got for Becky. And so I went in there and opened her box first. And it was a, you know, a nice, beautiful sweater and something we could afford. And then I opened my box and it was a Remington Model 800, 870 pump shotgun. Come on. And I looked at that shotgun and I thought, oh, my Lord, how in the world? Because I know what she made. <laughs> and I said, how in the world did you buy me a shotgun? She said, well, the Sears card came in the mail. <laughs> and I said, I said, what do you mean the Sears card came in the mail? She said, well, I got this card in the mail. That's back when the credit card actually came in the mail. And so, not a debit card, but a credit card. And so I said, honey, we can't afford this. I said, we got to pay that back. And so, make a long story short, I took my beautiful shotgun that my wife bought me back to Sears. And then we went and she bought me a sweater. So we both had sweaters that we could afford. And, and so that's what we did. But every time I get to Christmas, I think about our very first Christmas and how much she loved me and how little I purchased for her. I, 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 she got the short end of the stick on that thing. But uh, you're not too old to love presents. And uh, we all love presents. But this morning, I want to take just a few minutes to talk about God's presence. And, uh, you know, many of the, the gifts that are under the tree today and uh, we'll be there before the end of the next couple of weeks, before Christmas Day. Uh, many of those gifts, uh, you know, our kids will play with them, and they won't think about them again. Some of those gifts will not even make it through the first day before they're broken. Yeah. And, and we, we, you know, we put a lot of emphasis on those presents, and it's important to honor our family and, and all those wonderful things. 
But I want to talk about the presence, and uh, I want to talk about God's gifts to you and I. And this morning, I just, I just want to remind you of some things that, that I believe are very important. And I'm going to just share some scripture. So let's, let's go to the Word today, if you will. If you have your Bible or your smartphone, you can follow along with me today. And uh, the very first gift that we need to understand is why we have this season. The reason for the season is Jesus Christ. He's the greatest gift you could ever receive. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, in the New Living Translation, the Bible says, Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us, look at this, in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. That's how much God loves you today. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20 in the New Living, the Bible says this. It says, God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, he has been revealed for your sake. He's not a mystery. God has revealed the Son. And we're going to continue in this message in just a few minutes to talk about God the Holy Spirit and God the Holy Spirit is here to reveal Christ to us today. Jesus was God's gift to man, the redemption of man, even before the creation of man. The Bible says before uh, there was anything, before God breathed anything into being, Christ was the lamb slain. That's who he is. Now, if you look here today in John chapter 1 and verse 14, in the New Living Translation, the Bible says, So the Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. I'm going to stop right there. A lot of people think that God is this big God with a big white beard in heaven. He's got a big stick. And every time we do something wrong, then he bops us on the head with that stick. That's not our God. God loves you. He loved you so much that he gave you the greatest gift that could ever come from heaven above, and that's Jesus Christ. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Jesus testified about him when he shouted to the crowd. Uh, John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds. This is the one and I was talking, that I was talking about when he said, someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am. For he existed long before me. And I love this verse 16. From his abundance, we have all received one gracious blessing after the other. And I want to read this out of the Amplified. I love this verse, and I love it out of the Amplified because it allows you to understand the purpose of my message, understanding the presence of God as a gift to all of us that are here today. For out of his fullness, out of God's fullness, out of Christ's fullness, we have all received, all had a share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing and even favor upon favor and gift heaped upon gift. Isn't that awesome? In the Amplified, I love that. Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. One other scripture, we learned it back in Bible school or there in, in uh, uh, you know, Sunday school, uh, equip class, whatever it is for our young kids, children's church. And, and John three sixteen, the New Living says, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone, turn to your neighbor and say everyone. everyone. He doesn't want to leave anyone out today. So that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And I'm just telling you, Jesus is the present of all presents. That's who he is. That's who he is. To have this present, his presence in us, it's the greatest gift. And you know, we could stop right there. That's enough. But here's the wonderful thing. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that when Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, he went to sit at the right hand of the Father. He told his disciples just before he went there, he said, I'm going away that the Comforter might come. And he was going away so that the Holy Spirit could come. And on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God was released on the whole earth. Not one person to be left out. Not one to be left out. In Acts chapter 1, we see the promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the whole earth. And so the Holy Spirit was God's gift to us to live, not just to make it, 
Yes, Christ came to give us eternal life, but the Holy Spirit was also gifted to us so that we could live in this place, in this earth with power. Turn to your neighbor and say with power. With power. Not just to eke it through life and one day get to the sweet by and by, but that we would be able to live this life, a victorious life, Amen. filled with the glory of God and others to be able to see that glory manifest in our life. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, the New Living Translation says it like this. Peter replied and he said, Each of you must repent of your sin and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin. That's where it begins. Without Jesus, we'll never make heaven. And so the greatest gift is to receive what Christ did for us. But he doesn't stop there. He goes on to say, Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I love this translation because it says the Holy Spirit, he is a gift. Now the Holy Spirit is God. God in the earth. But God being released in us to empower us, whatever we need, whatever that need is for each and every situation. And this became very real to my wife and I. And we're itinerant ministers. We, we minister, you know, we're only home five to seven days a month. And so we're gone a lot. And so we, we, we minister a lot on, on the working and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But at the beginning of this year, my wife and I had an incredible uh, physical challenge. And we're not sick. We don't take pills. We don't go to the doctor. But we came back from Turkey and from Israel and from, the, the, from Asia from a six-week trip. And when my, my wife got home, she got up to get out of bed, and she couldn't walk. She couldn't feel her feet. Her feet were tingling, and she said, well, maybe I just, you know, pull something. Let's go walk or whatever, and we went down the block and going to do our normal two-mile walk around our neighborhood, and she said, I can't do it. And so she came back home and, and took a hot bath and did a few things, and we went to bed that night. The next morning, she literally had to crawl up the stairs to get to the bath. We have a shower in our downstairs and the bath upstairs. She, she literally had to, she said, I can't, I don't know what's happening. But we went to one of the doctors that are members of your church, a, a chiropractor there, just to maybe it was something we pulled. And she looked at the x-rays, took x-rays and looked at everything. She said, I can't, I cannot adjust you. She said, I've got to send you to a specialist. To make a long story short, my wife, her spine had shifted and she was going to the neurosurgeon, we, we went to two different neurosurgeons and both of them came with the same diagnosis. You're going to have to have spinal surgery and, and you're going to have rods and all this mess. You're going to be down three to six months. And my wife and I looked at each other and we went, we can't be down three to six months. This is our life. We're itinerant ministers. If we don't minister, we don't eat. And it's that type of thing. And I said, you know, we, we got to get a word from heaven here. And so we begin, my wife and I, we begin to get in the Word of God and do what we do every day. We read and we begin to have communion every morning and, and, and just get the, we'd turn on the music and songs we sang to everyone else. We allowed those songs to sing to us. And the song I sang for you this morning, we climbed into the secret place under the shadow of the Almighty and we began to allow God to minister to us knowing that he would bring a word to us that we could stand on and we could grab a hold of and we could hold on to that word no matter what was fixing to take place. Make a long story short, the Lord brought us a word. He said, you're going to run and not get weary. You're going to walk and not faint. Come on. And then he gave us another word. He said, it's not over. Yeah. It's not over. And we grabbed a hold of those words and we began to run and we began to walk, and God began to give us uh, some things. I don't want to tell all of her testimony because my wife can tell it like I can't tell it. But make a long story short, through this year, we've been on a journey. My wife is totally healed. She takes one Advil every so often. We didn't have to go through surgery. The pain left. But we had to stand on the Word of God. These things that I'm sharing with you this morning, we had to make these personal to us. We had to be reminded of who God the Holy Spirit, who He is, and what God has promised that He will do for us. Jesus said this in John chapter 16 and verse 7. He said, however, this is Christ speaking, 
I'm telling you uh, nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable. It's good, ex expedient, advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the comforter, listen to this, the counselor, the helper, the advocate, the intercessor, the, the strengthener, the standby will not come to you into close fellowship. You see, a lot of people know about Jesus. A lot of people know about God the Holy Spirit, but they have never received him. The presence, the presence. They've never received the presence into their own life, into close fellowship. He's not a religion. He's not a denomination. It's God. And he wants to reveal himself to each and every one of us in this room today. One of the most incredible things about receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, he gifts us according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 through 11. And I want to read this out of the Passion. This is incredible. The Bible says there in verse 8, for example, this is the way it starts in the Passion. For example, the Spirit gives to one the gift of the word of wisdom. For my wife and I, we had to get a word of wisdom. God, you better tell us what you're saying. Because this is our life. If we're finished, that's fine. If you want us to do something else, that's fine. If we've done our last trip, that's fine. But Lord, we've got to know that from you. For another, the same spirit, he gives the gift of the word of revelation knowledge. Maybe in your business today, you need a word of knowledge for where you're headed for 2020. He goes on. He will do that for you. To another, the same spirit gives the gift of faith. For my wife and I, the gift of faith to stand that things were going to change. Yeah. That that pain was not going to persist. Yeah. For another, the same spirit gives gifts of healing. Another, the power to work miracles. To another, the gift of prophecy. To another, the gift to discern what the spirit is speaking. The gift uh, To another, the gift of speaking different kinds of tongues. To another, the gift of interpretation of tongues. Remember, verse 11, it is the same Holy Spirit who distributes, I love this, activates and operates these different gifts as he chooses for each believer. Amen. Not some believers, but each and every believer. Amen. Now, I know Pastor Randy's taught on the Holy Spirit a lot over the fall, and we were here for a lot of those messages. But this passage blesses me so much. It's not just the presence under your tree are the ones that will be there shortly. These are our ways of blessing those that we love, our family. But God's presence, abiding not only with us, but on the inside of us, you're not alone. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're not alone. For this season, it's tough. For some people, they're spending this Christmas season alone. They lost a spouse, a loved one. I have a great pastor friend from South Africa, a wife, they had ministered together for over 40 years. He lost his wife this year. And he's, he's struggling with that. And we, we talk a lot over the phone. And I just tell him, listen, Holy Ghost is there. He will stand with you. Yes. That's all. I can't even say I know how you feel because I don't. Yes. But I know the Holy Spirit is his comforter, his yes. helper, his right. advocate, his standby. Right. Yes. Yes. Maybe you lost your job this year. And you're in the process of finding your way to a new vocation the holy spirit yes. will not leave you right. you're not alone right. maybe you lost a loved one this this year something has happened but god is with you god the holy spirit he dwells within us to empower us to lead us to direct us to reveal jesus to us maybe you're here today I, I, a lady came to me after the first service this morning and she said Pastor Joe, she said, please pray for me, my 16-year-old son. She said, my husband passed away. She said, so my son is very bitter. He doesn't understand, and he blames God because he doesn't have a dad. I said, sweet lady, I said, we're going to have to lean and rely on God, the Holy Spirit, to soften that young man's heart and let him know that God has not left him. You see, we live in a fallen world. This place is not perfect. But God is perfect, right. and his ways are past finding out. Right. He will not leave you alone. Yes, that's right. His Holy Spirit yes. 
God the Holy Spirit is here to intercede. Yeah. So what do we do with these gifts? What do we do with these gifts? You must receive them. The gifts that are under your tree, if you don't receive that gift, I know our kids, there's always one. Allie was the youngest, so she was the one. Now we have grandbabies, the oldest grandbaby, she's the one who takes care of all of that now. And she'll go underneath there and she'll find it, it says, uh, to so-and-so from Poppy or to so-and-so from Santa. But you know what? She can say that, but if the other person doesn't reach out and take hold of that gift, it's going to stay under the tree. Yeah. Presence, gifts are to be received. This morning, God's presence, he's to be received. We can talk about his presence. We can say, oh, I love the presence of God. I love to be in the house of God. But allow the presence of God to come and break down the walls. Many times the walls we put up to protect ourselves can also keep the presence of God from coming and taking away the layers of our hearts so that God can speak and take us to a wonderful new place in Him. Many love the gifts, and they love to give gifts, but many people have a hard time receiving gifts. In Acts chapter 1, the Bible says this in verse 8, you shall receive power. I love this, ability, efficiency, and might. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and under the uttermost parts of the earth, the ever bounds of the earth. I want to encourage you this morning, church, to activate those gifts yes. that God has placed on the inside of you. Amen. You know, a lot of people, many times, when you talk about the gifts of the Spirit, they'll say, well... I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit back when I was 5 or 10 or 12, and now they're 35. It's not a one-time thing. The Holy Spirit of God is spirit. He's always moving in our life. And he needs to be stirred on the inside of us. Stir up the gifts. That's what uh, Paul spoke to Timothy. He said, stir up that gift. He said, I, I know. I was there when they laid hands on you and sent you out. I was there with your mother and your grandmother when they laid hands on you and sent you out as a minister of the gospel. Many of us have grown up in church around the things of God. My dad now is 90 years of age. My mom is 84 years of age, and they're in my home. My dad pastored until just about three, four years ago. And so I, I'm around a man of God that that, that I, I, I see my father, and, and, and whenever he wakes up in the morning, I, I watch how he moves. And, and, and as he's getting older, his short-term memory is not so good. And sometimes things will come out of his mouth, and, and, and you'll see it frustrates him. And, and I mean, it's almost like he catches himself, and he'll say, you know what? That's not me. That's not me. The Holy Spirit needs to come and do a work on my short-term memory because that's not the way I function. Lord, I ask you to come and, and remind me and stir those things in my heart and my life. Well, he's 90 years old. But don't wait till you're 90 to start stirring these things. Allow them to be a part of your life. You're not too young. You're not too young. My grandbabies, when we have meetings around the world, if they can be in the meetings, my grandbabies are the first ones in the altar call. They love the presence of God. Amen. Enjoy and love the presence of God. Amen. Just like my granddaughters, when they were little, uh, you know, they loved the dolls, and they would carry them around. Now it's a new iPhone. <laughs> Come on. Can you believe that? A $1,000 device in their hand. I'm thinking, are you kidding me? But they want to show everybody. But guess what? Kids are no different than we are. You get a new pistol, come on, somebody. You're going, to, hey, come on, let's go shoot. Someone gets a new muscle car, you got to go show them what it'll do. Oh, yeah, we're no different. You get a new ring or you get a new watch. Look what Santa Claus brought. People want to know. They want, you know, you're not ashamed to show off the gifts. There's a practical side of the working of the Holy Spirit. Can I just say this this morning? He's not going to force you to do anything. He's not going to force himself on you. He's not going to make you weird. He's not going to make you do anything. 
Now, I will say this. Sometimes the things that God does through us, he blows our mind. And they're past finding out. You can't explain it. Two neurosurgeons said to my wife, you're going to have to have surgery, get ready for it, you're going to be down three to six months. But one of those neurosurgeons, you have to understand something, one of those neurosurgeons is a Holy Ghost man from Seattle, Washington, a pastor that we minister with from Thailand. And when I called Dr. Lau, I said, Dr. Lau, you've looked at all of these x-rays. I said, I've got a question for you. I said, have you ever seen anyone healed of what my wife has and what's happened in her spine? He said, matter of fact, I have. I said, that's what I needed to know. <laughs> and then he asked me, he said, now let me ask you a question. He said, what are you and Becky expecting whenever you come through surgery? I said, totally healed, no pain. You spend all that money, what do you think I expect? <laughs> come on. He said, well, just let me tell you right now. He said, you're going to have to manage your expectation because he said it never works that way. He said, the pain usually just moves to another area. He said, so if you can manage the pain on this side of surgery, he said, I would suggest that's what you do. Now, my lovely wife, since January, she takes a naproxen every once in a while. That's it. Otherwise, there's no pain. That's my God. That's my God. So we had to. That's our God. So we had to put our faith out there to believe God. Now listen to this. I love this, and I'm bringing this to a close. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7 through 10 in the Passion. I want, I want you to see this. Look at this. Paul says, we are like common clay jars that carry this glorious treasure within us so that the extraordinary overflow of power will be seen as God's power not ours. That's the key. Lord, we honor you because we know it's you working through us. It's not ours. Though we experience every kind of pressure, we're not crushed. At times, we don't, uh, we don't know what to do, but, but quitting is not an option. Isn't that awesome? Turn your name and say, I'm not quitting. Turn your name and say, it's not over. Come on now. It's not over. At times, we don't know what to do, but quitting is not an option. We are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. Amen. We may be knocked down, but not out. We continually share in the death of Jesus and our own body so that the resurrection life of Christ, Amen. of Jesus, will be revealed through our humanity Amen. so that others can see Jesus in you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Powerful. In other words, Jesus did not leave us to make it on our own. You're not here by yourself. The power of the Holy Spirit was given to us to face anything the enemy might throw at us. That's why they call us Christians. Christians literally means little Christs. Would people see Jesus in you? The power of God at work on the inside of you. We are to display his presence by demonstration. Like a light on a Christmas tree. A Christmas tree doesn't look like much until you put the lights on it. And then it lights the whole room. The last thing I want to drop in your spirit this morning. There are many benefits to receiving God's presence. And the greatest benefit is sitting before me this morning. Even those of you watching online today that are part of this house or consider this house your home. The family of God. The family of God. Now, I have a great family. All of my family is in ministry. My, uh, either Gateway Church there in Dallas or my sister Cindy is at, at Lakewood here in Houston. We're here when, when we're at home. Uh, our children ministering. Over 27 of our kids and nieces and nephews on any given Sunday morning are sharing the gospel, leading people in the presence of God on any given Sunday. We love what we do. But even our family, we have a few uh, struggles and problems. There are times when we don't all get along. There are times whenever things happen and things are spoken that you have to go back and say, listen, I shouldn't have said it that way. I'm sorry. Happens in the body of Christ as well. 
sometimes we, we say things and, and maybe we're upset or whatever and, and, and it hurts the person. We didn't mean to hurt them. And you know, they may not come back to church because of one little thing we said. And Becky and I have been in full-time ministry for 47 years and we've been married this December almost 43 years. And so, uh, you know, it, I pastored for 10 years. We served other pastors for 25 years before we started our own ministry. So, you know, I love Pastor Randy and, and Stacy. They're a whole lot better pastors than I ever was <laughs> because people come to you and they say, Pastor, this is happening, that, and the other. What do you think I need to do? And I'll go, I'm not a counselor. I'm a pastor. The Word says, do this. And if you do this, God will do this. Three weeks later, I haven't been in church. They come back and they say, the pastor, uh, 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 it's not working. Now, the Bible says if you do this and, and you do this, then, then I will do this. You don't see him again for two or three weeks. And then finally, listen, pastor, I'm not going to try. It's just not. Finally, I want to treat them like my kids. I told you three times. I'm not telling you again. I'm going to spank you. <laughs> now, that's the way. That's why, that's why I'm not pastor. The family of God is the greatest family on the planet. What happens whenever things begin to take place in our life and struggles come, we want to run away from the family instead of run to the family, run to the house of God. I have one last scripture, Acts chapter 2 and verse 44 through 47. And the Passion reads it like this. All the believers were in fellowship as one body. And they shared with one another whatever they had out of the generosity that they had. They even sold their possessions, their assets, to distribute the proceeds to those who were in need among them. Daily they met together in the temple courts and in one another's homes to celebrate communion. They shared meals together with joyful hearts and tender humility. And they were, continu and they were continually filled with the praises of God enjoying the favor of all the people, and the Lord kept adding to their numbers daily those who were coming to life. I love that. The reason they came together was because they were coming to life. Because of the new birth. Because of Jesus Christ. But not only did they come to life, but they were empowered to live the life that God had gave them. I see five things. In this passage, the first thing that I saw was this. They had fellowship together. You need the fellowship of the believer. You need those that are sitting next to you more than you really realize. You need them. The second thing in this passage was there was unity. My wife and I, there have been times whenever we get in agreement. There have been times when we were not in agreement. But with the times that we're not in agreement, which are not very many nowadays, but when we get to that point, we just don't fight it out anymore. I just tell her she can win. <laughs> she knows better. We grab hands, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. We pray, we come together until either the Lord says, you know what, she's right. Or she'll say, you know what, honey, we just need to do what the Lord has told you. I feel like that's the best way to go. Unity. The best thing for you this season is to allow fellowship, unity to come to your home. Yes. Generosity. It's a season of giving. It's a season of giving. I shared the story this morning about uh, we were on the road somewhere. Can you remember how many years ago it was? Because we do it a lot. But we're in Walmart, some town, because that's all there was. There wasn't H-E-B <laughs> or Kroger's. It was yeah. some small town. <laughs> Food line. I can't, one of them. And we're buying some groceries for the week to have there at the hotel. And as I'm buying groceries, there's a single mom and two kids behind me and the boys. He's hanging on the side and the other one's sitting in the, stro in the trolley there. And mom's putting the things they've got to have, noodles and spaghetti sauce and things like that. And a loaf of bread, peanut butter and jelly and things like that in there. And the kids, they're grabbing, cheer you know, they're grabbing the... Uh, Lucky Charms or whatever it is and putting it in the basket, the real sweet, beautiful stuff, you know, and bubble gum and 
and Pop-Tarts. I'm grabbing all this kind of stuff. And every time they did, she'd move by and she'd take it out of the box, put it back up and say, well, we can't afford that. We can't afford that. They're going, I mean, you know, they find a truck, put it in, can't afford that. I'm behind her. She's moving on down the way, and as she walked off, I just put Lucky Charms in my basket. I put the gum in my basket. I put the little truck in my basket. And so she gets down to the end there to check out. She's checking out there in the, in the line, and she finishes checking out, and they've boxed up her, her bas- everything together and put it in the bags. And I said, sweet lady, would you just hold on just one moment, please? I said, would you please bag these things that are in this probably right here? I said, this is for her. I said, I bought this for you and your boys. I said, I understand maybe a few sugar things here you didn't want to buy for the kids, but I said, if you don't mind, I want to bless you. She said, but, but I don't, I said, I understand that. I know you don't have to have it. You don't need it, but I want, can I do this for you? I want to. Come on. Big old tears welled up in her eyes. She said, but, 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 but why? I said, because Jesus loves you, and I can do it. For no other reason than Jesus loves you, and I have the power to do it. And I want to be a blessing to you and your family. Generosity. Fellowship, unity, generosity. I love this joy. They shared meals together with joyful hearts. Why do we come together? I'm watching people today giving around plate full of cookies. And, and all. Why? We love one another. Right. It's a season of joy yeah. and favor. When you walk in these things, I promise you the favor of God yeah. will overtake you. Yeah, right. You can't outgive Him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you can't bless others more than He wants to bless you. Right. He will overtake you with the goodness of who He is. Yeah. Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe this is not your favorite time of year. For me, I love this time of year. For traveling ministers, it's not the easiest because everybody's doing Christmas programs, and then January, they're setting the new year and sharing the vision. So December, January, we're not as busy as we normally are the rest of the year. That's why we love to be around this house. But maybe you're here this morning, and there's some things you're facing Things have not gone the way you wanted them to go. But I'm telling you, first base, Jesus Christ, the greatest gift. I'd like for every head to be bowed this morning just for a moment. Just a moment, I'm going to hand the service back to Pastor Reggie, and the service is not over. We're going to finish up here in just a moment. But maybe you're here today, and you'd say, Brother Joe, I've never given my heart to Jesus Christ. The Bible says that it's with our mouth we confess and with our heart we believe. The Bible also says it's appointed unto man once to die and after that there's judgment. But Jesus today is our Savior, our King. And yes, one day He'll be the righteous judge. But today He loves you and He has an incredible plan for your life. And He wants you to come into this family and make this family your own. Maybe you're here this morning and you'd say, Brother Joe, I'm just not sure. It's not about just being in church. It's not about living in America. It's about about making Jesus the Lord of your life. Maybe you're here today and you'd say, I'm just not sure. The Bible says you can know whom you have believed. Last of all, maybe you're here this morning and you'd say, Brother Joe, there was a time whenever I walked close to God. There was a time when the Holy Spirit felt very near to me, but maybe there was a tragedy in your home. Maybe there was a divorce. Maybe there was a bankruptcy, a failed business. Maybe you're struggling with a destructive habit. I don't know. But instead of running away from God this morning, would you come to Him and allow the Holy Spirit to pour in the oil and the wine to bring healing to your home? Maybe you're a husband and wife, and this season has brought about a lot of stress. God wants to be the glue. He wants to be the salve to heal broken hearts, heal wounds that have been there. He wants to come and make
make the difference. Empower you to do what you cannot do. To walk away from that destructive habit. Never to touch it again. For it never to be an issue ever again. If you're in one of those three categories, would you just lift your hand and say, Brother Joe, would you pray for me? Thank you, sir. Thank you. In the balcony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All along the bottom. Yes. Over here. Anyone else? Here in the middle. Yes. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Just lift your hand. Put it back down. The Spirit of God is moving. He's touching hearts today. He's touching hearts. Thank you, Lord. I want you to stand to your feet just for a moment, and we're going to pray a prayer together. And then I'm going to hand the mic back to Brother Reggie. I want us to pray this prayer together. Can you do that? And I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. I like to lift my hands. You know why? Because it's scriptural. The Bible says, lift up those hands that hang down. He says, I will strengthen those feeble knees. But in an attitude of surrender, can we lift our hands this morning? And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Uh, there are those there in the congregation or watching online. You may not have lifted your hand today. Say, I'm needing prayer. But would you just pray this with me, all of us together? Let's pray it. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, born of the Virgin Mary that he lived a perfect life. He went to the cross, gave his life. On that cross, was raised from the dead, sits at the Father's right hand, and he calls my name right now. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin, all of the things that I have done that are against you. I give you my life to serve you all the days of my life. I welcome you, Holy Spirit, to do a fresh work in my heart. Take out the stony heart and put in a heart of flesh. But Lord, I can hear your voice and I can move when you say move. Do what you've asked me to do. Be a light in a dark place and I give you all the glory in Jesus name Amen Hallelujah Thank you church Thanks for listening to this week's sermon Find more of our podcasts on iTunes or in our audio library at thecrossing.cc